this video by saying how I have just been MIA recently. I have been struggling with school. It's like midterm season. It is like depression season. It is like slump season. I am in the biggest book slump I think I've ever been in yet over the past couple of months, which is unfortunate because like fall is when I really want to read some books. They just haven't been hitting very well for me. I feel like all of booktube is in a slump right now. I could be wrong, but all the people that I watch are also in a slump at the moment. With that being said, I also would like to shout out our book club. Our book this month is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. If you guys would like to join, we just picked it yesterday, the day I'm filming this. So yeah, the day before the video goes up, I just got chosen. We have the entire month to read this book. If you would like to join, you can click the link in the description or on my community page or in my channel description to find the book club. We would love to have you. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna shout out my TikTok account my book talk account, I guess I should say. I'm gonna start posting on there regularly, so if you wanna follow me on there, the at is here, it is Ray's Reads, I believe that is also in my channel description and in the description box. So, we got all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, into the books. Like I was saying, I was in a crazy book slump this month, and I only read four books, four books this, well, in October. So, let me give you the, st the statistics on everything that I read and then we'll jump into the actual books and reviews. So like I said, I read four books. That equals 131,351 pages. It took me about six days to finish each book. Um, I read, the books that I read were mainly medium paced. Most of the page numbers were between 300 and 499 pages. They were all fiction books and the genres were three thrillers. These are intermixed, so like there's gonna be more numbers that I like read books, but it's because some have multiple genres. So I read three thrillers, two horrors, one LGBTQIA plus book, one romance book, one mystery book, and one contemporary book. I read three books digital and one book print, and I read all English languages, and my average rating for the month was a 3.19, so it was not a great month of reading um so yeah i'm looking at my statistics for like all the months and then definitely i've been taking a big dip i think at the beginning of the year i was reading like eight books a month which is crazy but like miss that for real come back home mommy misses you anyway let's get into the actual books that i read so the first book of the month that i read was actually we used to live here by marcus killer 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 no idea. I read that on my Kobo. So I actually gave this one a 3.75. And my review was, I didn't really know how I felt about it. Um, it was really an unsettling read. It was not very, very, well, it was not very easy to read at nighttime. But I wasn't scared by the book. There's a lot of like loose threads in the plot, I felt like, and it was very out of place. Um, I mean, out all over the place. I guess I should tell you what the book's about. Sorry. Okay, so this book is about. <laughs> That's my bad. This book is about. Let me read this. It's gonna be a Netflix movie starring Blake Lively. Interesting. Okay. As a young queer couple who flip houses, Charlie and Eve can't believe the killer deal that they've just gotten on an old house in a picturesque neighborhood. As they're working in the house one day, there's a knock on the door. A man stands there with his family, claiming to have lived there years before, and asking if it would be alright if he showed his kids around. People push it to a fault. Eve lets them in. As soon as the strangers enter the home, uncanny and inexplicable things start happening, including the family's youngest child going missing and a ghostly presence materializing, materializing in the basement. Even more weird, the family can't seem to take the hint that their visit should be over, and when Charlie suddenly vanishes, Eve slowly loses her grip on reality. Something is terribly wrong with the house and with the visiting family, or is Eve just imagining things? But yeah. So I didn't, I didn't love it. It had so much promise. That premise seemed really cool and exciting to read. I feel like it kind of lost itself and was trying to be cool. Not cool, but like, was trying to be 
a lot. It only had so much, so many pages to work with. Like, it's only 320 pages. And I think it's a, like, a one-off book. I don't think it's a part of a series. So, yeah, it's just, it could have been a lot. And I think that's what made it fall, fall flat, because it took so many different avenues and explained absolutely nothing. Like, I didn't understand anything that was going on. And it pissed me off. I hate, like, a... Uh, I hate a book where it's like, am I going crazy or is this real? Because once you get to that point, it's like, okay, so you're just going to write whatever. And you're not going to make any of it make sense. Anyway, I digress. (laughs) 3.75 for me for that one. Um, It reminded me of Mother. If you've seen the movie with Jennifer Lawrence, that movie kind of centers around, like, it gave me that feeling. I wasn't really scared. I was just kind of, like, sick. I was like, get out of this house. Like, why are you in our house? Like, leave you're not welcome to be in this house so yeah i'll just we're gonna leave that at that <laughs> and that's we used to live here by marcus Kalayor Kale- or something i don't know okay the next book that i ended up reading that i cannot believe that i actually read because it was so horrible sorry <laughs> i read the pumpkin spice cafe i i caved the wind was starting to blow. I was in Chicago. I was on a train. What's something nice and fun and light and fall and romantic? I didn't really want romance, but like I just want like fall vibes. Not necessarily horror, but fall. So I was like, okay, Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Everybody's been talking about it and raving about it. Basically, this book follows a girl who moves into her aunt's Pumpkin Spice Cafe because her aunt decided to go find herself on a trip and she decided to go kind of settle down out of her crazy corporate life and come to this small town hopefully to find herself and get a fresh start and throughout this book we meet the grumpy to the sunshine and they start chatting up and she's like i can't date him that's crazy and they start chatting up basically that's really mainly it it just follows like them on their relationship path arc so i should have known because reading this description I just like okay the, the, it starts with the perfect grumpy ex sunshine small town cozy romance that girl up with a pumpkin spice latte this fall it's also apparently spicy but i don't think it was very spicy it kind of pissed me off actually if you want to get serious it pissed me off because that wasn't spicy that was like edging me and not in a fun exciting way that was edging in like a bitch i don't want to write this shit right now we'll come back later and I was like, oh, this is so rude, but whatever. <laughs> so I gave this book a 2.5 star. It just really felt like nothing was happening the entire time. And they went from like being like, I could never say I to him to like making out the next chapter and being in love. So it was very insta love. It was very like the main male character's problems were really just like the entire book. The, the entire issue it was really just like i miss i love her so much she's gonna hurt me i love her so much but she's gonna hurt me and that's a lot of time to do that in a book that's like 200 pages like i was like, okay on to the next please like there is no way we're still sitting here trying to figure out what's going on with these past problems just get over it okay get over it and like he's hurting her in the process and that was pissing me off and the spice wasn't spicy enough. And I'm not a spice reader. But if you're gonna give me spice, don't give me half a spice scene. Don't give me. We lean in to kiss. Oh, the door opens. Oh no, bitch. F- f- fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa, sorry about that, you guys. That was kind of just like, uh, I went on a tangent there. <laughs> anyway, that one I also read on my. So the next book I read in my most anticipated release of the year. Well, as of July when I read this other book was The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Regula. Now, if you guys know me, you know I am a hidden pictures bitch. If there are no fans of hidden pictures, I'm dead. You're not gonna see me. I am not alive and I stopped breathing whenever that book went out of existence. Like I like I I live and breathe hidden pictures love that book but his second horror novel i believe it's a second novel i think he did children's books before but i'm just gonna call this one a second novel because i feel like it's his second novel this 
this book follows a dad who is invited to his estranged daughter's wedding after they hadn't talked for a long time. And you follow him as, well, she's getting married to these very rich executive, like tech execs, like tech exec family. And she's marrying the son of this family. And from the start, that is like, this guy is weird. But then they go to the wedding and it's on, it's in like a remote, not a remote, well, like a remote campground that the family owns. It's like a, like they're rich as hell. Um, and you follow him trying to uncover all the secrets and get to the bottom of it. Basically, that's the whole fucking book. Anyway, um, sorry, uh, any, anyway, so I gave this book a three star, 3.0. I was very disappointed in it, like I said, unless I didn't say that, but like I might have said. I, like I said, I love it in pictures. I was so excited for it, but this one just kind of didn't do it for me. Frank was pissing me off. That's our main character. He was too, like, upstanding of a citizen. He was too morally sound for me because at some point, like, at what point does it stop? Like, can you stop being so morally sound and protect your family? What the fuck is wrong with you, you owe? Anyway, and he was just like angry though. He was just like angry and mad and I I don't know. He was pissing me off. He was being like he was being a man. And I usually you never see me read books about men ever. But I was like, it's Jason Reculick. I'm gonna read this. I was wrong. No more books about men. No more main character men books. They're not for me. I don't care about men that much. I mean I do, but I don't wanna read about a man. Like it's just like, oh, cool <laughs> but girls are fun to read because like i'm a girl but anyway yeah i just didn't love it the, and then after spent the entire book searching for stuff i will say there was some like fun plot twists but also they were not anything crazy just felt like nothing was really happening the entire book but then the ending um it like had a very random ramp up of action in the back in the end like 30 40 pages but then it just had a time jump and it just was like all resolved and i was like what in the world and then the actual ending like the actual like last couple pages of the book it was like it would it, no it was just it just wasn't good i just did not like it at all i gave it a three star um just because it was easy to read like it wasn't like i was like oh gonna really have to think for this one very simple read so I wouldn't not recommend it, but I wouldn't say spend your money on it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, that is Last One at the Wedding by Jason Regulick. The next book that I read in the last one, unfortunately, was the book club pick of last month, and that was Murder Road by Simone St. James. I also read this book on my Kindle. Go, go. I'm gonna dress her up soon. My birthday is on Friday, and I'm gonna be 22. So hopefully I will get some funds, and I'll be able to give her a cute facelift because like, she's so boring. Like, okay, mama, next. But anyway, Murder Road by Simone St. James was the book club book that I think so it is the longest book that I read this, this month. People are so loud outside of my house. Okay, anyway. So, Murder Road follows a couple named April and Eddie in July of 1995. They are on their honeymoon and they are driving through the city of something on a road <laughs> where hitchhikers have gone missing. And the sense that they're driving, they see a girl um, covered in blood. They stop to help her and then she dies at the hospital. But the police are like, that's suspicious. You're the suspects now. I 
I feel like this book was so Jeepers Creepers core. I love the Jeepers Creepers aspect of it. And it started out really fun and exciting, and I was like, oh, there's action. But then after that, it kind of just like... And then it was pissing me off because like, what do you mean that the two people that have rescued this hitchhiker are not the main suspects in your in your case? Are you stupid? Granted, it was a small town, and they needed like someone to pin it on. That's why they did that. But like, it really didn't make any. It didn't make any sense. It made no sense. And then literally, it just follows him doing that. And then halfway through the book, the plot changes, and now we're following something else. And they like were doing all these things by choice, and I was like, "What are these choices you're making? These are kind of crazy. You guys are a little stupid." And then they were like keeping secrets from each other, and it was like a whole thing. And I'm just like, "What is going?" So, <laughs> yeah, like, it was just a lot. I really didn't feel like I was in the 90s, but it was saying a lot about Princess Diana, so I guess that was gonna, that was supposed to try to help us be in the 90s, um, which is fine. <laughs> but, like, okay, random. And the vocabulary was weird, and the first chapter was very wet pad esque and then the writing style changed, and then it would go back, but the main character, uh, our girl character, I can't remember her name, she would just talk about herself so odd and it, it's just all weird and I don't I don't know I don't know I just I don't know and then characters would do things that wouldn't really be like their character ishness and I'm like okay what is going on um but yeah I love that one I give it 3.5 star and I feel like it could have been really good but it just wasn't good I think I'm gonna read Memorials next by Richard Kismar and we'll see how that one fares but it's my birthday week, so I'm reading Maeve Fly right now, and I will be starting Phantasma afterward, and I think I'm going to read Twilight. Hey, I feel like I'm out of my slump, guys. I don't know. But, okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so dearly. Thank you for coming every single week. I will be posting every week that I can, and follow the TikTok, join the book club. I love you guys so much, and I will see you again next week, like I just said. Okay.